are there drops? How do you try to get guys to carry over what they're doing on the field to, and catch them in games? Yeah, you just keep working. I mean, it's you know, it'd be one thing if it was one person that had a, a consecutive series of them, but it, it was you know, unfortunately it was multiple people, and it, and it, and it came at the uh, in the critical situations. So, I mean, the thing is, you don't get down on people like that. I mean, it happens once. I mean, it's you just try to work through it and keep going to them and making sure that everybody's confident in what they're doing. Some of those things of the, like yeah. free throws, like you want to address it, but you don't want guys thinking about it too much. Yeah, I think you could. You could put it in that category as well. I mean, you got guys that you trust that have really good hands, and then it happens once to each of them. And you don't want to sit here and make it some catastrophic epidemic and you know put that in their head. But yeah, you see it all the time in different sports, with free throws being one of it, or you know batters or pitchers. Example of the, um, the stunt that they ran last week to get that sack. Is that something that maybe give a little time together, go on and sat fold? You know, sure. Better in that situation. Sure. I mean, it. it, it as a, you know, when you're playing in the offensive line, there's definitely a familiarity that you that you need. But on the flip side, unfortunately, for the NFL, is things happen quick, and you got to move guys around with injuries or whatever happens. So, you know, you don't try to rationalize it. I mean, you you work those things, those stunts, and you got to pick them up. In the process of setting plays up, when you see something you want to come back to, how do you go about figuring out when is the right time? To yeah, there's a lot of factors into there. You know, the way the game's going. How, how they're calling things and what, what you have set up and all right, when's the right time to do that? And you try to make a, you know, educated guess. Of, and there's stuff going in that you, you see how they're going to play you and how you prepared. And then as the game, the flow of the game, you may see an adjustment they make and you're like, all right, I'm going to come back to this. And, and, you know, you hope to hit at the right time and if you got the right coverage. Arthur, what's made Von Miller just so consistent over the years? Yeah. He's a fast rush between the run. He's, he's different. He, he's a, uh, Special player, uh, you know those guys. Uh, you know Ryan was in his recruiting class at A and M. He's got some pretty interesting stories about how, how big of an athletic freak he is. But he's he's different. Uh, you know we played him a couple years ago here in Denver. He moves ways that most guys don't. His upper body sometimes doesn't look like it's connected to his lower body. So he's a, he's a heck of a challenge to prepare for and the, and the, to block. How, how much better should the O line get more nights in there? More Taylor gets comfortable in working with Roger and. and what are you stressing this week heading into week six? Yeah, you're just I, like every week. We're, we're, we're trying to stress improvement and consistency. And, and like I said, whether you win or lose, there's there's things you've got to fix, and you've got to improve, and you're working to do it. And so, and then you know you go along with it too. There there may be different matchup issues going in this week, but we're just trying to get more consistent as as an offense. You told so. us early on about not necessarily scripting. Could you expand on just like no, the early game philosophy? Yeah, no, we, we scripted, but I guess I probably could have done a better job defining. You know, some and, and again, I, I can only go from my experience and with different coordinators, but if you look around, like somebody says, hey, here's my first 15 plays. Like I've got everybody's different, but you have opening thoughts, and you try to stick to it, but there's things that happen, right? The first play of the game, you, you know, you're on, you're on track, you get the penalty, you get the spot, hey, there's a penalty. So now you're, you're off track, and so you've got to go to something else. Like you may necessarily – that's not the second play you'll call because something happened. It happened in the uh, preseason opener in Philly. Same thing. You wanted to call. Okay, we're false start. First and 15. Here's where we go. So you, you try to stick to, you know, where your plan of attack is. I guess what I was trying to say is it doesn't always go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But you're still trying to get to the Sure. Yeah, because you, 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 you've prepared, but like a game, it's a, sometimes it's a chess match or, okay, this is what they're doing today. And, and sure, we'll adjust. And, but yeah. So that that's it can definitely throw you off, and I can't speak for anybody else. You know, there, you have thirty one other opinions. So AJ snaps go up last week. What does that say about how he's kind of learning? You know, maybe more about the position than, than simply you know, catching the ball. Yeah, I think a lot of times when, when guys are productive and as he's growing as a, as a rookie, you you try to put him in the best best spots. But we we still have a, a good belief that receivers have done a good job, and um, so it's just a flow of the game too, and and how it goes and. Where he's used, but yeah, as long as he keeps improving, uh, you know, he'll keep he'll getting more snaps. What do you think he's he's learning? Maybe in terms of whether it's block and or, or route running or anything like that. Are you seeing strides in that? In oh, those, definitely. In those departments. Yeah, all those guys, I mean, the, the, the whole receiver group, and, and there's not just because AJ has made some plays. It doesn't mean somebody else has done something wrong. Uh, but yeah, no, I think there's growth in it. I mean, same with Nate Davis. You get out there as rookies, you play more, you learn things, and you adjust off those experiences. Get to see Munch this weekend. Talk about what he's meant to your career. 
Yeah, so I, you know, I've been a lot to be thankful for. You know, he obviously hired me here. Uh, he's a great teacher. He's a great man, and he taught me a lot about protections. And you know, one of the jobs I had with him was was drawing the protections for him. And then he meet with him at night. He put his notes in it, and he, he's just a, a great person. And he's a really good football coach, and he's really good at what he does. And there's not a lot of guys like him. How much of those protection philosophies are still in this playbook here? Well, there's there's a lot of I mean, you know, we've gone through a couple schematic changes, but there's certainly lessons that he he's taught me along the way that you apply no different than other coaches I work for. But but Munch is uh, really good at what he does. Do you stay in touch with him? We do. I mean, he's not a you know, when I see him, you see him at these NFL events, and we talk to him once a summer to see how he's doing. You've been coaching Delaney obviously a long time. Right. Um, snaps are down for him this year when you look back at 2017. Uh, is that just a function of game plan, or, or is he yeah. you know, 100% health-wise? Or? No, I, uh, you know, a lot of that is situational on how the games are going. And so there's certain packages we have them in, and if something is working, we may stay heavy in one thing, or we may go to something else. And then there's nothing that, uh, I mean, again, the first play of the game went to him. It was unfortunate he got called back. Uh, he understands that, and he knows where he's at. And a lot of it, too, when it's all, it's all situationally and game plan based. And in some games, like I said, I mean, the Jacksonville game, obviously, the snaps are up. But you don't really want to be in that two-minute situation that long. Usually, you're losing. I mean, you go back to the, his 94-year uh, catch season. Not 94-year, but 94 catch season. We weren't very good. And then we played a lot of two-minute, and he got a lot of balls. And then the next year, we were, we were much better. And his catch percentage went down. But it, he was extremely productive in both years. So sometimes, you know, the, you get those stats, and it's like, you compare some, you know, the guys that average a lot of a lot of points on a bad basketball team. They may, you know, you, you don't want to, you want to find a fine line of balance. And he's a very productive player, and you know, it's just unfortunate in some of these games, depending on how they're gone. So, but if you get if you get a lot of them in two minute, and it's really productive, and then you find yourself in scenarios where you're not in a lot of two minutes, isn't there an obligation to find another way to get sure. the ball? Sure. Yeah, you, you're always finding ways. I mean, that's that's it goes back to the questions about, you know, Corey early in the year. He may be the primary on a play, but the ball may not go there because the coverage dictated. They may they may have tried it, and you go to the second read. But it, it doesn't necessarily mean that, like, just because the target's on the stat sheet, there's things that are called for guys. It just necessarily it happened to the second read or third read or you know something happened on the play. Would you expect over the course of 16 games then for those numbers to kind of round out to where you would envision them? At sure. The start? Sure. As you plan, I mean, as you go, and obviously things happen during the season. But yeah, absolutely. Evaluate quarterback play after five games. I mean, it's the same, you know, from week to week. You know, just it's con you evaluate consistency, the stuff we may have asked him to do, and uh, like I said, I mean, that's it's the toughest position in sports because it's, and, and it's like this job, like you know what you step in for, like you, you you know what you signed up for, but at the same time, there may be things we ask him to do week to week that may you know that may be different, uh, you know, our plan from protection standpoint or how we're trying to attack them. And so I know a lot of times people look at it and like, oh, he does, should have done this or should have done that. Well, you may not know what we have told him behind the scenes. And uh, Marcus has been consistent. And we, you know, like, the, like every position, we're just asking these guys to get better. That's all, we, that's all we're asking for. Is, is